Afternoon folks, welcome back. Sorry it's been a little while, just been having my usual summer downtime. Uh, it's also been very busy in the gallery, which is uh, good for business obviously. But um, but yeah, looking forward to a busy autumn schedule and uh, starting here tonight up at Chirrut Tarn. Now this isn't a place that I don't think I've vlogged over the last couple of years, but I really love coming up here. Um, it's often very quiet and the type of conditions we've got this afternoon are absolutely ideal for it. It's it's quite a blustery afternoon with lots of changeable weather and uh, the light keeps popping out over towards Blencathra. Um, the joys of being self-employed, I uh, I locked up early today and came out because uh, these conditions were, were too good to pass up. Um, I did actually try and film a couple of videos over the past few weeks, but I just... For one reason or another I couldn't really get into it and there was a couple of occasions where you know the conditions were good but I was only ever shooting the one shot and it felt like the video would have been a bit boring me just stood there just taking one shot. I'll show you a couple of them on the screen now. Uh, one in particular was at Oldswater which I think I've mentioned before in that I've been trying to sort of box off that view down towards um, sort of Glen Ridding and Walholm Island and I think I'm pretty happy with the, the latest version I've got there, although they can always be improved. Um, so yeah, I tried videoing that and I couldn't, I couldn't really get into it, to be honest. Conditions were lovely, but I don't think it would have made a, a great video. Um, and then last night I was down at Wasdale Head getting absolutely blown to bits, um, shooting mainly with the 100, 400. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was that windy that making a good video out of it would have just been uh, impossible, really. So I'll show you a couple of those images as well. So I'm just going to quickly pause it here and actually cut back to the shoot at Waswater. Even though the rest of the video really wasn't up to much, having processed a couple of the images, I actually think they turned out all right. So it would be a shame not to talk you through at least how I went about shooting them. So we'll nip back to Waswater a couple of days earlier and then we'll pick back up here at Chewett Tarn uh, after I've talked you through these two shots. Now today it's been absolutely tipping down, well it has been for the last two or three days actually, and I thought it would be a good idea to come down to Waswater because this is my kind of go-to place, especially when you've got interesting weather. Uh, it's very changeable at the moment, lots of heavy showers coming through and then little breaks in the cloud with the light, and this place is really ideal for that. A lot of people don't like coming here, they find it quite difficult to photograph. I think it's because they have this preconceived idea of because there's a lot of water here it needs to be calm but I think I've said in previous videos this place is never calm so you've got to kind of move away from that stereotypical you know lake reflection type shot and look for things a little bit more interesting. Uh, behind me I've got a shot set up looking towards the two Scorfell, Scorfell Pike and Scorfell and I'm just watching for little breaks in the cloud as they're passing over and uh, I'm looking to really zone in on the line of the, the beck going up to the mountain. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk you through what I've got set up here. Right, so you may remember that I did a video here uh, about 18 months ago in the winter. And uh, I came down to this little secluded bay. It's got a couple of little fences that lead into the water. Now I've come here a lot over the years, long before I ever started doing these videos. And it really makes a good location for when the water levels are high. Now, it's obviously tipped it down the last three days. So there's potential to shoot those fences with them all being submerged and then leading off up to the score fells. Now, I think I mentioned in my last video that I'd picked up the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Now, the shot that I've got planned here is absolutely for that. Now, I'm at 400 millimeters right in and we're looking at the line of the beck running up to what will be the sort of junction as you go up to Scorfell Pike. Normally, you can't see that beck, it's not visible, but as I drove into Waswater today, because all the rivers are in spate, you can see it a mile away, and when the light hits it, you know, it really shines like a, like a beacon almost. So the shot I'm trying to achieve here is gonna have that lovely sort of crisscrossing between the valley there and then hopefully with a bit of spotlight on the 
deck that's running down, it'll, uh, it'll really give a nice sort of contrast between the light and the dark. I can well imagine in post that I'm probably going to almost deliberately underexpose this to really bring out those contrasts. So I'm going to give this five minutes or so, and because uh, the light just keeps ducking in and out at the moment, but I think we should be able to get something pretty decent here. Right, the light is popping out now, so I'm going to grab this shot in a moment. You can just see the light there, just coming over the side of the bay there and then it should work its way round there onto the fell so I'm gonna cut the film in here get the shot and I'll stick this one on the screen let me know what you think So after this point I moved up towards the top of the lake and the wind really picked up. I would say it probably got up to about 40 or 50 miles an hour which made filming almost impossible and even the shooting with everything locked off on, on a big heavy tripod. Because I was shooting everything with the 100 to 400 it was really difficult to get anything sharp. This one on the screen was a little bit of a, a grab to be honest while the light was nice but it was a real shame I couldn't take advantage of the, the conditions because the light was absolutely gorgeous, but it was just too windy. So you win some, you lose some. I'm sure I'll be back down there soon and uh, hopefully I'll get some more like, like this, but hopefully a little bit calmer. Um, but tonight, fantastic conditions. Uh, I've got two or three shots here that I'd like to try and get. I've shot here many times before and taking workshop clients up here but I rarely get to actually shoot it myself these days so really looking forward to it. Uh, the first shot that I've got planned I'm going to take you down to the tarn. I've come up to the hill a little bit just to get out of the wind so I can record this piece of camera uh, but there's some gorgeous light breaking out towards Ben Catherine in the distance there so we'll head over to the tarn and we'll get set up. Okay, so this first shot that I've got set up behind me, part of the reason I love coming to Chewett Town at this time of the year is with the sun being pretty low in the sky and the position it's in, you get lovely sort of raking light hitting the side of uh, Blencathra behind me. And also it's a, it's a good option to come up here when, the, when it's been raining because all these foreground grasses get quite flooded. And what that does is it helps to eliminate a lot of the distractions. I think when the water levels are quite low up here, it, it can look a bit untidy, but today it's really working. Uh, I've got the polarizer on and that's key to this shot in that because the water is quite choppy, um, darkening down that water, I mean, it almost looks jet black through the camera. And what that's doing is it's eliminating some of the ripples and the distractions through luminosity rather than you know, the conventional method of putting an ND filter on and doing a long exposure. If I did that, I think it would look a bit unnatural, to be honest, and I'd rather this shot look as it is, which is a, a sort of blustery uh, autumnal afternoon, and it, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, technical spiel with this shot, about 24 millimeter. I've got soft grad on, polarizer, as I say, and I'm just waiting uh, for the light to pop out every now and again. There's a tree that's quite prominent in the in the mid ground there and i'm just waiting for those periods where it's it's lit up uh, it almost lights up like a spotlight um so yeah really really nice conditions this afternoon actually i'm hoping to get quite a few different shots here some down here at the time with the wide lens and then i'm going to move up onto the wall and probably get the 100 400 out and try and pick off some details in the far distance but uh yeah let's see how this this one turns out let me know what you think in the comments
Okay, I think that one turned out pretty good. I was looking on the back of the camera there and the, uh, the contrast in the mountain at the back, it's almost jet black. Uh, so it might be a bit of a tricky one to process that one. Uh, the color in the camera, although it's a, obviously a JPEG preview, it looks very vivid. So yeah, it might be a bit of an interesting one to process, but the light there was absolutely gorgeous. It's gone in a little bit now. So I'm sort of fingers crossed it's gonna pop back out again. Um, when I come up to Chewit Town, a lot of the time, I like to come up to the top of the hill by the dry stone wall and get the long lens out. Now you'll have probably seen a lot of classic shots using this dry stone wall with a wide lens looking towards Blencathra. And if that shot does work, I will probably take it because it is nice tonight. Um, but the stuff I've got in mind is using the 100-400. So I'm gonna just, oh Christ, just give me a second. It's, uh, it's here comes the rain. Right, I'll try that again after being rudely interrupted by the rain there. So yeah, the shot that I've come to this spot for really is a long lens shot. It's gonna be a good test of this 100 to 400 that I've just bought. Uh, the 24, 200 that I've got, for the shot I've got in mind, it's not quite long enough, whereas the extra reach here, I think will will really pay off. Now the weather at the minute isn't looking too promising now. The cloud to the west has really thickened up. Um, so I'm going to stick it out and see what happens, but it's it's not looking too promising at the minute. Uh, the shot I'm going for is towards the back of Lonscale Fell and Skidder. Uh, there's a nice line of trees on the slope there in the distance, and at the right time of year, which we're coming into now, you can get some really nice late light hitting those trees, and then you get the mountain behind as a nice silhouette almost. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's the plan. I don't know if that's going to come off or not. Um, but yeah, as I say, an hour till sunset, so we'll stick it out and see what happens. I don't think this is gonna happen now. Uh, just looking out west there, clouds really thickened up. It's got dark very quickly and um, it doesn't look like it's gonna clear. So I'm just gonna jump in here because I made a bit of a cock up in that I didn't bring a spare memory card for my B-roll camera. And what happened after I'd filmed this little piece of camera, uh, I didn't actually manage to get filmed properly. So I grabbed these couple of bits on my mobile phone. So apologies if the quality is not so great. Uh, but the view I was shooting there towards Lonscale Fell, a lovely squall came in that was backlit and it was really quite nice to shoot. It wasn't exactly what I had planned, but the version I've got of this scene, I think works really well. Uh, so this is the shot here, really lovely light, backlighting that squall coming in and just absolutely classic Lake District weather this, I think. I also did a black and white version, which I think works really well also. Really simple scene, this just lovely recession of layers there and uh, here it is on the screen. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is it a color image or a black and white image? Personally, I prefer the color, but let me know what you think. You win some, you lose some though. It hasn't been a totally ruined shoot because uh, that shot that I got first off, I think looks pretty good on the back of the camera and it should should come out pretty, uh, pretty nice in the end, I think that one. Um, what you didn't see, which I couldn't really video, I kind of dashed over there and tried to make some of it. There was some nice light breaking out towards uh, St. John's in the Vale there. A um, few of the trees were getting spotlit, so I grabbed a long lens and you know, tried to grab something there. They're probably not very good, to be honest, but... Um, yep, I can confirm these were definitely awful. One of those just tried to do a bit of a salvage job. I could have done with being another 500 yards up the hill, to be honest, with a clearer view, but I'd committed to this spot to try and get that shot that I was talking about towards Latrig, so... Can't be in two spots at once, there you go. Um, one thing I did notice just while I was on my summer break there that the channel's ticked over 5,000 subs, which is lovely. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching and subscribing. Um, I appreciate I'm not the most consistent content creator on here. My output very much 
sort of depends on how busy the business is because obviously this isn't my sort of uh, full-time thing um so if i'm out shooting you'll see it and if i'm in the gallery and the shop's really busy then i'm obviously i can't vlog uh, but like a lot of photographers over the next sort of two months um, through autumn, I'm going to be very busy. So there'll be lots of stuff coming up on the channel. But as a thank you, I'd like to uh, do a bit of a print giveaway. So today's shoot, I think we'll, uh, we'll head back to the printer, uh, the big Pro 2100 piano printer that I've got at home. And we'll, uh, and we'll get that printed off and I'll let you know how you can possibly win a free print. So I'm pretty pleased with that. It's come out really well, that print. Uh, I've done it on semi-gloss paper rather than a matte paper because there's an awful lot of colour and, and contrast in it. And I think that might be washed out a little bit if I did it on a matte. Uh, so yeah, so it's on photo speed smooth pearl and it's a shade bigger than A3, so a pretty decent size. And I'm going to be giving that one away. So if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning this print, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment in the comment section and I'll automatically put you into the hat to uh, be in with a chance to win this print. What I'll also do as well is that other image that I showed you earlier that I particularly liked, uh, I'll put that up, up as an option as well, so hopefully you'll like one of them. Uh, so yeah, big thank you to everyone who, uh, who's been watching over the last couple of years and sub to the channel, I do really appreciate it. Uh, just one other thing before I go, just a quick plug for my calendar, uh, it's on pre-sale at the minute, It'll ship early November. And what I should also say that I didn't mention previously is that for an extra tenner, you can choose from one of three images and get those on top, well, one of those as an A4 print. So a pretty good value, I think. Uh, so I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. Right, I've cobbled this together enough and, uh, and waffled on a bit in this video. I hope you've uh, stayed to the end anyway. And uh, it won't be long before you see me next because uh, I'm out shooting again tomorrow and uh, I'll be very busy through autumn, as I said. So plenty of stuff coming up. So until then, I'll catch you later.